Hey everyone, I'm finally back with another AGS tutorial. Uh, I know it's been a while since I did the last one, um, but uh, I'm back now and so we'll be, um, I'll be doing more on hopefully a regular basis and uploading them to YouTube uh, more often now. Um, if you remember the last time we, we talked, we were on, we were doing um, sounds and music. And um, so I'm going to try to pick up in this video where the last one left off. Um, I had discussed in the last video just some basic things. In fact, here I'll show you if I scroll down. This is what we did in the last video where we played a sound. Remember, it was a foghorn sound. Um, we, set a, we set up a music to, to play and repeat in the background, which was the set music, repeat, and play music function. We waited a few seconds, uh, five seconds, and then we stopped the music. So um, in this video, what I wanted to do is um, sh show you a couple of things, a um, little bit more advanced topics related to sound, um, not too advanced, but one of the things was ambient sounds. Um, and what I mean by that is, let's just say that you have um, your game, or you have a scene in your game, where the player is walking around, let's say, a forest. And in the forest, you know, you want to hear night sounds in the forest because it's nighttime. Uh, for example, um, uh, crickets might be chirping or something like that. So you want to uh, you want to be able to hear the the crickets chirping, but you don't want to have to set up something in the in the script so that every um, you know five or ten seconds you play the you play a new a new sound because you know your old one has ended. And you also don't want to have to create this huge wave file of you know a thirty minute sound of just crickets going. So what so what uh, AGS allows you to do is it lets you have a, a small sound, of, let's say the, the crickets or whatever, the waterfall or the, or the machine humming or whatever you want to have sort of in the background. And then you can, you can put that into a loop. And AGS will just play that over and over and over again in the background. And you don't have to worry about it besides just telling AGS, okay, start the, start the sound now. So what I've done is I've um, I found a, um, a file. I'm going to bring up my um, uh, Inter uh, Windows Explorer here. I have a file, and I've already put it in the um, in the sound directory here under Sammy's Quest, um, and I've count, called it Sound Two. But what this is is this is just a, a, a crickets, um, just sort of like at nighttime or something like that. It'd be crickets uh, chirping in the uh, in the background. So again, I just pulled that off of the internet. I um, copied it into my sound file, called it Sound Two dot Wave, and now I'm ready to go. So what I would do in my um, after fade in script, whenever or whenever I wanted the um, the sound to start playing, I would go ahead and call the function play ambient sound. Open parentheses. Now this takes a few parameters uh, that we haven't seen yet. The first one is a channel. Um, AGS can play on several different channels. Uh, for ambient sounds, just type in a one. Uh, channel number one is reserved for ambient sounds, so in most cases that's the one you want. Um, if you have more than one ambient sound uh, playing, you can use a different number. But for the most part, you just want to use channel one for this. Then it wants the sound number. Uh, in this case, my crickets is sound number two. Volume can be any, anywhere from zero to 255. Um, let's just make it, uh, you don't want to make it too loud because your ambient sound should be sort of in the background. It should sort of, sort of be a, um, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be overpowering to the to the player, so let's let's pick something fairly moderate like 50, and then X and Y. Now what this is, is is let's just say that your ambient sound was a machine humming or something that was that that had an object that was emanating the sound, and it, that sound was emanating from a certain part of your room. You could give it an X and Y coordinate so that when the player gets close to that X and Y coordinate, the sound gets louder up to this maximum here, in this case 50. It would get louder and louder as the player approaches the, the sound and softer and softer or quieter and quieter as the, as the player um, moves farther and farther away from the sound. If you don't want to use that sound, if you just want it to be at the same volume throughout the whole room, you can just put 0, 0, 0 for both X and Y here, and that will just always display the sound uh, or play the sound at this uh, at volume level that you've given it here. So that's all that you need to do there. And if I run the game now, you should hear the crickets in the background. So let's see. Okay. So you hear the crickets in the background. It might be hard to hear. Now it should be easier to hear. Um, but you, hear, you heard the foghorn. You heard the music play. You heard it play for a few seconds, and you heard it stop. So everything else that we did happened, but now you, now you notice that that cricket sound is just playing over and over again. Um, so 
that's how you get the, the um, ambient music to, or I'm sorry, ambient sound to play in the background. Um, the second thing that I want to discuss are footstep sounds. And um, what, I wanted, what I wanted to show you there is let's just say we have Sammy walking around. Let's just say we wanted to have his, um, his footsteps um, be heard while he, while he takes a step. Well, that's really easy to do. In fact, you don't do that in scripting at all. You do that in your character editor. Um, first of all, though, I need the footstep sound. I just happen to have a couple of footstep sounds that I created um, here, footstep one and footstep two. So I'm going to take those two files, and these are this is just something I just knocked on the uh, the table, you know, a couple of times. One time for footstep one, and then I did another knock on the table for footstep two, just to sound, just to get that sound. So I've got two um, wave files here. Let me cut these and go into my Sammy's um, Quest folder into the sound and I'll paste them into here and of course I want to call them sound 3 for footstep 1 and let me call the other one sound 4 this will be footstep 2 so I have sound 3 is footstep 1, sound 4 is footstep 2 now let's go back into AGS go into my character um, and Sammy in this case actually sorry go into the views um, Sammy's normal view, which is him walking. Um, in this case, I want the whenever on the frame in which his foot contacts the ground. That's that's the frame that I want the sound to play. So in that case, his foot is kind of lifting up here. It's going forward, and then it hits the ground at this spot. So at this frame right here, I want the the first footstep sound to be played. So if you notice in the attributes, there's a sound parameter here. So in that sound parameter, this is where I can enter three, which is the footstep number one. And then if I go forward now, uh, where his second foot uh, touches the ground, which is about right here, I want the other sound to be played. So that's uh, footstep number four. So you'd have to, now I'm going to do the same thing for the, um, for the other loops, for him walking to the left, pick a frame where his foot touches the ground, play sound number three, pick a frame where his other foot touches the ground, play sound number four. Same thing for um, him walking to the right. Sound number three is here. Sound number four is here. And then him walking away from the camera. Um, sound number, uh, or footstep number one is here, and footstep number two is here. And that's all there is to that. So um, AGS, whenever those frames occur in the animation, it will play the sound that you specified. So let's see how that works now. Oh. You know what? I don't have a walkable area for, for Sammy to walk on. Um, let's um, let's start Sammy and go back into the um, the character. Let's start him back in the um, room number one because I want that's the main hall room. I want him to be able to walk around in that room while I'm testing out the uh, the footstep sounds. So now he's back in the main hall, and now you notice that as he walks around, you hear you actually hear him walking. So that's exactly what we want. It gives the, the effect. Now you might want to have a different sound for, uh, for the carpet here. That kind of sounds like he's walking on wood, but you get the, the general idea. The third thing I wanted to talk about, um, we haven't talked about points yet, but if you play the old Sierra games, um, adventure games, you remember that there was a point system. So that as the player did certain, uh, completed certain puzzles in the game, um, he, the game would award the player points. Um, you, the game would have a certain maximum number of points, usually a couple hundred points, um, that was possible for the player to get. And then once you finish the game, depending on how many of the puzzles that you finished your, along the way, you'd have a certain score um, out of a certain maximum you know, number, and that would tell you sort of how well you did in the game. Um, AGS allows you to do the same thing with, uh, with points, with score, um, and it also allows you to play a certain sound um, Whenever you get, a, whenever you, uh, whenever points are awarded to you, if I go into the general settings in my project tree, scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that there's one that says under uh, it's under sound and it says play sound when player gets points. Uh, it's set to by default it's set to zero, which means don't play a sound at all. But here I could set this sound to whatever sound I wanted. Sound if I had a sound, well let's just say I have sound two which is the, um, the crickets. Um, so if I wanted to play, for whatever reason, if I wanted to play crickets, 
Um, I guess that would mean no one's really interested. You know, you got points, who cares? Um, but anyway, so if I wanted to play sound number two when the player gets points, then I would do that. And then to assign the points, there's a, a scripting function called um, give score. Uh, and you can use that function to uh, award the player um, points uh, during the game. So if they did something and that's worth five points, you could say give score, open parenthesis, five, close parenthesis, and semicolon, and that would give the player uh, five points, for example. Um, and, and along the way, if you have set this uh, play sound, then it would play that, that particular sound um, automatically, and you wouldn't have to do that. So that was just a few more things that I wanted to uh, talk about um, uh, regarding sounds. Uh, in AGS. Join me in the next video. Like I say, I'll, I'll make them fairly regularly um, going forward. Hope you join me again in the next video, guys.